What we're looking at here is the reports for the Meridian DPA. And right here we have the report for arterial stiffness. Here's the, the fax paper printout report that comes out without a computer. Here's an interpretive guide. Over here we have the heart rate variability uh, reports. And we'll go through all of these in more detail now. So we're going to start over here with this report. And this is the PTG analysis report. This is the color report that comes out of the computer. Uh, and it's exactly the same as this report here, except this one is in color. You can see here we have the arterial stiffness for the large arteries at the top, the small arteries, sometimes called the middle arteries, and these are called the capillaries typically, so the very small arteries. Obviously, the large feeds the middle, feeds the small. So if we have a problem up here with our large arteries, we're um, likely to have problems down below. You can see down here we have the large the middle and the small. Now right on the top here we have the PTG waveform and here's the APG waveform. Here's what a typical waveform looks like. If you look down in this area you'll see the other uh, things that are going on. The first thing we want to look at here is the recognition. We want to make sure that we have over 80 percent of the pulses are recognized. If we don't we consider it an invalid test. Then we're going to move down to the next one where we're going to talk about the ejection. That's right here. And you can see whether that's normal or not. The pulse rate is going to be next. And it tells you whether that's within the normal range or not. The pulse height, <coughs> which is displayed right over here, uh, is going to, and it's also displayed here on the, uh, in the other printout, right in this area. So here's where a pulse height is. We'd like it to be within this green area here, and that's considered normal. We're going to come down to the, the pattern right here at the bottom and we're going to call it something between A and G. Up here it's a C and we get a particular number in the brackets. That's not considered to be the biological age. Biological age has to be calculated and we show that over when we get in the interpretive guide. Here's the type B and again the brackets, number in the brackets is not the uh, biological age. Now we'll go to the interpretive guide. We're going to see a lot of information on the interpretive guide here. <clears throat> this interpretive guide has got a lot of pictures in it, so it takes three pages. You can eliminate the pictures if you want to and cut it down to one page, or you can put even more pictures in, because it is an Excel spreadsheet. And what we do is we export the patient information from the Meridian, and then export it into something we call a calc file, and from the calc file the report is printed. The calc file is where calculations are done. If you look at this top one here, we're going to see the name of the patient up here at the top, then we're going to take a look at what's called recognition here. We'll also see the age and a few other things about the patient, the date of the test. So the first thing we're looking for, did we actually get 80% of the pulses? If we did, it's a fine, it's a good test. So here we got 93, it was a 99%. Now we're going to look at ejection time. This is what the ejection time was. And a description of the ejection time, what's normal, what's considered um, high, and what's considered low. And a description of that. The heart rate is right here. This particular one is shown in beats per minute. What's normal, what's low, and what's high, and an explanation of that. We go into pulse height. Here's our pulse height, pH is pulse height. We want to have normal. If it's less than and greater than, then a description of the pulse height. We also look at this wave here. So this shows us the shape of the wave. That's what we're interested in. So what is the shape of the wave? And that's where we can tell what the PG, PPG waveform is. It could be A through G. In this case, we're coming down here and we're going to show that we have a B-type. Right here, the waveform is a B-type. So this is still part of 5 on this sheet down here. So this would be a B-type here. And this is a little graphical that shows us each one of these areas and what's going on. When we get over here to an F or a G, we really have a significant cardiovascular situation. In many cases, we want to refer that patient to a cardiologist for further examination. Now, biological age is a calculated variable. This is another way of looking at it. Same thing that we had up here. But we're going to see here that we have what age is represented by each one of these. A, B, 25, 20 to 30, B is 30 to 40, C is 40 to 50, and D is 50 to 60, E is 60 to 70, F is 70 to 80, and G is 80 to 90. Now, obviously, if you're 30 and you're running up an F or a G, it's really of great concern. 
If you're 80 and you're running an FMG, well, it's still a concern and you'd like to be down here at a B or a C. But there's a reason for it and this can be corrected. We're looking at circulation analysis here. We're looking at the EEI, which we saw over on the circulation analysis report up here as this first one, the EEI. And then we're looking at the BDI, which is the middle arteries, and then we're looking at the uh, capillaries, which is uh, DEI. Explanation of each of those. Here's where we're looking at the type. We say that we're a type B. We got that from the report over here, type D, B. Okay, now by using that we can do calculation in the calc spreadsheet and determine the biological age. So this is how we come up with what the calculated biological age is. These are pictures of what's going on. If we go down in here in the bottom one, we'll talk further about biological age, and it shows how we adjust that. Again, we're showing this report here so you can see a summary of the report and descriptions of each of the things here with the arrows coming in. Down here we have a summary report. This is kind of a summary of all the basic things that are up above, telling us what's normal, what's out of range, what's going on. And a little bit of a suggestion as to what action others have taken if they have similar type of situations. And some people take arginine type products and uh, usually works fine unless they're up into a F or a G. They'll usually find the cardiovascular system will go down after a short period of time. Sometimes as short as weeks, but usually months. Uh, six weeks would be a fairly good range where we want to see some real changes. Now we're going to move over to heart rate variability. And we're going to start up at the top here with the report that comes out for heart rate variability. And there's a couple things we want to look at here. We definitely want to look at the balance between our sympathetic and parasympathetic system. That's right here. In this case, we're mostly parasympathetic. This is a high ratio of unbalanced air, where we're mostly parasympathetic in this case. We'd like to see a ratio of 6 to 4 or 4 to 6. Here's the, the information up here. This goes through an awful lot of different detailed information. And we'll get down in here and we'll explain that in much greater detail. Here's our tachygram from start to, for, for, to finish. When we saw it coming out on the Meridian DPA, we only saw a little piece of it and then it went back and repeated. This is the entire one. Here's our ranges on our total power. Our total power are VLF, LF, and HF. These are the four that we're interested in. We'd like them to be within the shaded green area or higher. If they're lower, that's when we have concern. Now we're going to go down here and take a heart rate, heart rate variability interpretive guide. And we have this broken down into various sections here. SDDN is considered to be one of the very good indicators of what's going on uh, in the area of heart rate variability. So we have an analysis here of what's happening. We'll go down now and take a look at total power. And when we look at total power, we're going to show what the number was. And then we're talking about what's normal and what's happened if we're low. If we're high, there are some indicators, but we're not nearly as concerned if we're high. So this is an explanation of total power and what high-low means and what normal range is. Now we're looking at VLF. Again, VLF, remember we went through this power, this density, power density spectrum up here. VLF describes the same thing. Normal range, this is a very low frequency. The low frequency is here, normal, and what decreased and what that means. High frequency, again, normal, what decrease means, and a brief description of what it's all about. Now the ratio between the low frequency and the high frequency is discussed here. We like normal range to be 0.6 to 2.4. And these are descriptions of what that all means. The low heart rate variability is described here, and here's a summary report with how this particular patient worked down, what his values or her values were. Again, this is a another screening report, taking a look at what the heart rate variability report with arrows coming in and showing you all the different aspects of it, and a summary report here. If we go up here, another way of presenting the DPA, talking about the computer printout here, and for this is the heart rate variability and what this all means with arrows coming in. Just another representation of, uh, of what's down here.